scalp is nothing but soft tissue covering over the calvarium scalp contains from outside to inside skin connective tissue or dense connective tissue actually it's a dense connective tissue then aponeurosis aponeurosis means it is formed by frontalis muscle that means aponeurosis of frontalis muscle and aponeurosis of oxygenus so that aponeurosis what you are calling galia aponeurotica or we can also call it as epicranial aponeurosis so first second and third layers adherent to each other these three layers we cannot separate so these three layers will be together first layer second layer and third layer first layer is skin second layer is fibro fatty connective tissue adheres very tightly overlying skin underlying aponeurosis then epicranial, epicranial aponeurosis that is this is epicranial aponeurosis then next to that that means just below that third layer there will be loose area tissue because of that loose area tissue only first three layers can move very easily over the loose area tissue next to the loose area tissue there is pericranium actually pericranium is nothing but it's a periosteum periosteum of this bone okay which bone calvary actually pericranium very loosely attaches over the bone except wherever the sutures are there see here we can easily strip it off this we can easily strip it off over the bone but when he reaches here that means this is sagittal suture this is coronal suture when we reach here pericranium inside there will be endocranium is there pericranium and endocranium will be attached by sutural ligament so these are the different layers skin connective tissue epicranial aponeurosis loose area tissue and pericranium then if we discuss about one by one skin skin contains more amount of hair and also sebaceous glands red glands sebaceous glands will be having the ducts those ducts will be opening into the hair fall what is the function of sebaceous gland it acts as moisturizer what is natural moisturizer here sebum sebaceous glands will secrete sebum that sebum will moisturize the skin is it ducts which will be opening into the hair fall if there is blocking of that ducts which leads to secretions in the gland but there is no passage which leads to retention of sebaceous secretions within the gland which leads to sebaceous cysts so that is one condition in case of skin then if you go for subcutaneous tissue that means connective tissue connective tissue contains blood vessels nerves and lymphatic cells actually if you take the blood vessel which is present within the connective tissue imagine this is the blood vessel walls of blood vessels attached by connective tissue it's a dense connective tissue it is highly vascular that means second layer contains more amount of blood vessels walls of these blood vessels are attached by connective tissue because of that whenever there is cut blood vessel will not collapse because of the stretching of connective tissue so whenever injury to the skull if you don't compress this blood vessel lumen will not collapse which leads to profuse bleeding in case of unconscious patients it means unconscious patient and along with scalp injury which leads to bleed until the death because he doesn't know that there is bleeding so nobody is compressing and these blood vessels are kept open bleeding will be profusely going which leads to total blood will be empty so that death will occur what i am trying to say is scalp is highly vascular and whenever there is injury unless until if you don't compress the scalp over the calvaria bleeding will not stop and in the second layer one more applied aspect if there is any hit which leads to subcutaneous hemorrhage that means hemorrhage within the subcutaneous tissue but because of subcutaneous tissue is more dense that hemorrhage or that accumulation cannot spread which leads to very little swelling but too much pain less swelling more pain right then if you go for aponeurosis how the aponeurosis will be formed epicranial aponeurosis frontalis muscle and oxygenus where frontalis muscle takes origin see here it is taking origin from the skin of the eyebrows it is taking origin from the skin of eyebrows that means there is no bony attachment there is no bony attachment it is taking origin from the skin of eyebrows then it goes backwards it becomes aponeurosis so that muscle is frontalis muscle and if you go for posterior side here external vascular protuberance will be there just lateral to that superior local line will be there little above there will be highest local line from both sides like this there will be one muscle will be taking origin that is occipitalis muscle it is taking origin from the superior local line and it comes forward here also it becomes aponeurosis 
if you wanted to say very specifically two frontalis muscles would be fused in the center but in case of posterior part two occipitalis muscles are not fusing there is a gap in between the two occipitalis muscles the aponeurosis will be extending in the center and attaching to the external occipital protuberance right so from the back aponeurosis is coming from the front also aponeurosis will come so these two will be together forms the epicranial aponeurosis right so this epicranial aponeurosis we can also call as galia aponeurotica why we are calling it galia aponeurotica what is the literal meaning of galia helmet galia means helmet so this layer is covering the calvaria like helmet so that's what this layer what we are calling galia aponeurotica if you go for applied aspects related to it if you make the sagittal cut we cannot see any gap because frontalis muscle and occipitalis muscle will be contracting in the sagittal direction so if you make the cut here we cannot see any gap because of this contraction but if you make the horizontal cut this muscle will contract forward this muscle will contract backwards which leads to gap in the skull understood then loose area loss tissue loose area loss tissue is fourth layer right it is present deep to the epicranial aponeurosis actually this is very loose connective tissue you can see here this is loose connective tissue this is loose connective tissue this loose connective tissue contains veins hemisphery veins those hemisphery veins will be connected with dural venous sinuses here dural venous sinuses will be present inside and outside scalp is there so scalp veins connected with dural venous sinuses by hemisphery veins those hemisphery veins are present in the loose area large tissue why it is important why i am stressing this hemisphery veins if there is any infection in the scalp that infection can spread through the hemisphery veins into the dural venous sinuses which leads to thrombosis so that means infection can spread from the loose area large tissue to the dural venous sinuses that is one applied aspect and one more thing this is aponeurosis below the aponeurosis loose area large tissue is there if there is any injury blood will be accumulated in the loose area large tissue that blood can be drained forwards but cannot be drained posteriorly because posteriorly occipital is muscle having a bony attachment but if you go forward frontal belly or frontal is muscle doesn't have bony attachments it is attaching to the skin so that's what blood which is accumulated here it can be trickled down and reaches to the orbit so when the blood is accumulated within the orbit which leads to black color eye discoloration of eye vein that condition what we are calling black eye within the loose area tissue blood accumulated it cannot be trickled backwards because occipital is having the bony attachment if you go forward there is no bony attachment so it can easily trickle it can easily enter into the orbit so which leads to black color eye that is what we are calling black eye right one more condition in relation to the loose area tissue that i will discuss little later then after loose area tissue what is the layer pericranium so this is pericranium pericranium is attached very loosely over the bones except at the sutures because at the sutures pericranium and endocranium will be attached by sutural ligament right now you can get one idea see here this is the bone parietal bone there is a hit over here or there is injury here because of that injury blood accumulated or any accumulations has happened beneath the pericranium and it cannot spread beyond the suture why here it is attachment is there so it cannot go beyond the suture clear so it can spread only over that particular bone is it so if there is a swelling if there is accumulation you should observe over the scar the swelling will be the similar to the shape of that particular bone is it or not so that particular condition what we are calling cephalo hematoma or cephalo hematoma whatever cephalo hematoma cephalo hematoma is nothing but accumulation of blood beneath the pericranium because of sutural ligaments at the sutures it cannot spread beyond that particular bone which leads to the shape of the swelling is resembles the shape of that particular bone that condition what we are calling cephalo hematoma another condition caput succedaneum what is caput succedaneum usually if you observe very newborn baby born through the normal vaginal delivery there is a compression of the skull which leads to edema over the skull that edema what we are calling caput succedaneum that caput succedaneum you no need to treat anything yeah immediately after you know, one week or few days okay, it will be reduced 
that condition what you are calling cap succeeding him these are the different conditions which are in relation with the skull and one more thing is that is safety valve mechanism did you understand that what is safety valve mechanism safety valve mechanism no actually whenever any accidents or injury inside the cranial cavity there will be blood vessels that blood vessels will be injured which leads to intracranial hemorrhage intracranial hemorrhage if there is intracranial hemorrhage keep on increasing the hemorrhage or increasing the amount of the blood within the cranial cavity which leads to increasing the pressure over the brain whenever the pressure increases over the brain which leads to coma or sometimes even death if there is a compression over the middle of lungata which leads to compression of the centers higher centers like respiratory center vasomotor center cardiovascular center these centers if there is a compression which leads to death also so what is safety valve here in some individuals injury to the intracranial blood vessels and also breaking of this calvary so if there is injury here and breaking of calvary also blood can be escaped from the intracranium to the extracranium and it will be accumulated within the loose area of tissue so there is no sudden compression of brain why we have time till the blood fills within the loose area of tissue so blood is accumulated in the cranial cavity that will be escaped through the this opening or this valve if it is there that can be connected with the loose area of tissue so blood can be escaped from the intracranium to the extracranium and it will be filled within the loose area of tissue until unless loose area of tissue fills the blood there is no compression over the brain so that mechanism what we call safety valve mechanism now we have discussed about what are the different layers are there and what are the different applied aspects related to those particular layers now we have to see what is the nerve supply what is the blood supply and what is the lymphatic drainage from the front we have to see like a clock from anterior to posterior side of course both sides will be there but i will tell you one side supratrochlear here see that i couldn't show you but here there will be supratrochlear next to that supra orbital jugomedco temporal right then auricular temporal jugomedco facial will be supplying to the face jugomedic nerve will be divided into jugomedco temporal and jugomedco facial jugomedco temporal will be entering into the skull jugomedco facial will be supplying to the face then auricular temporal just in front of the auricle there is auricular temporal but there is one motor branch or motor nerve which is supplying to the muscle which is coming from the front what is that front nerve so if you wanted to say in order from anterior to posterior side supratrochlear supra orbital jugomedico temporal then temporal branch of facial nerve which is supplying to the front nerve temporal branch of facial nerve then auricular temporal these are the five nerves which are present in front of the auricle connect supratrochlear supra orbital jugomedico temporal temporal branch of facial nerve okay then auricular temporal these are the five nerves which are present in the front of the auricle then if you go behind or posterior to the auricle again here also five only just behind the auricle great auricular it is not greater it is great auricular then motor nerve will come so how will you remember from the auricle second nerve is motor from the auricle second nerve is motor if you go front second nerve is motor if you go behind second nerve is motor if you go front after auricular temporal there will be temporal branch of facial then if you go behind after great auricular there will be posterior auricular posterior auricular nerve which is branch from the facial which is supplying to the occipital muscle then next one next nerve is lesser occipital greater occipital third occipital so these are the nerves which are present behind recollect nerves which are present behind the auricular great auricular then posterior auricular branch of facial nerve lesser occipital greater occipital third occipital these are the nerves right then if you see the blood vessels blood vessels from anterior to posterior side but the totally there are five only okay supratrochlear here supra orbital then superficial temporal these are the three which are present in front of the auricle supratrochlear supra orbital superficial temporal right then behind them, posterior auricular and occipital behind the auricle only two posterior auricular and occipital artery along with that veins will be present clear so i hope you must be studied w shaped arrangement of veins 
that if you understand this well and good, it's not I'm explaining. No. How it will be drained? Just imagine here there is supratrochlear, supraorbital. Here there is a face. I'll show you. If you see like this, here veins are supratrochlear, supraorbital. Both will be united and becomes an angular vein. It becomes angular vein. Right? That angular vein will be continuous down as facial. Leave the facial vein here only. Then here auricle. Here superficial temporal vein. And here maxillary vein will be present here. Superficial temporal vein, maxillary vein. Both will be united and becomes a retromandibular vein. That retromandibular vein divides into anterior division and posterior division. Anterior division united with our uses vein, facial vein. And becomes what? Common facial vein. That common facial vein opens into internal division. Then, if you go for next one, posterior region of retromandibular and the posterior auricular, both will be united and becomes what? External jugular vein. External jugular vein. That external jugular vein comes down and opens to the subclavian vein. Right? So, this is venous drainage. What is the lymphatic drainage? Very simple. Anterior to the auricular, pre auricular group of lymphatics. Posterior to the auricular, post auricular group of lymphatics. I think this is enough. Related to the scar.